And welcome back to Super Castlevania 4. We are still trekking through Castlevania itself. And uh, now we got ghosts to fight and ectoplasm. Oh boy. <laughs> the ectoplasm is actually kind of annoying because they always stay in the, in the actual screen itself. They, they conveniently bounce off the corners of the screen. Uh, for example, if you think it's going to go off screen, no it will not. The ectoplasm will conveniently bounce off of where the exact left of the screen is. And uh, that's kind of hard to get used to because, like, the ectoplasm's a big chunk of rainbow and, uh, you know, it keeps constantly bouncing and you just want to destroy it. It takes, like, two big swings to destroy it. Maybe three. And, uh, you know, those things hurt. As for the zombie ghosts, uh, the girls that we encountered earlier who just jump high and try and home into you, they're pretty much only there, and we destroyed them, and now we just have the white zombie tuxedo ghosts who just march forward and try and run into you. Not very intimidating, but you know. You're gonna love how Castlevania has every goddamn horror trope in the world, you know? You got succubus, you got sea creatures, you got skeletons, you got ghost creatures, you got a man walking his dog. I mean, shit. <laughs> Once again, the spikes will kill you in one hit, so watch your platforming indeed. Such a satisfying experience. We also come up to a new set of skeletons in this area, and uh, those are the Red Skeletons. I'm pretty sure Red Skeletons have been in a lot of Castlevania games. But the general idea about the Red Skeletons is that uh, they were a, pop a popular supervillain in uh, Captain America. <laughs> and uh, that they are invincible. You can knock them down all you want, but eventually they reform themselves and start walking once again. They're kind of like the dry bones of Castlevania. Only, you know, red. <laughs> it's like, what kind of creature just reforms itself like that? How do you do that, exactly? These little grabby arms, I let them grab me, because that way I can slash at the ghost skeleton guy who literally goes down in one hit. I know people like to avoid that for some reason, but whatever. Let it grab me, just slash it once, the end. God damn, that whip is so freaking satisfying. Oh yes, and as I found out through the uh, 10 million comments, <laughs> the Roman numeral 2 and the Roman numeral 3 allow you to throw your sub-weapon uh, more than once. But, uh, like, you can only throw one on screen, usually at the same time, but, uh, you can throw, like, three on screen if you have the Roman numeral 3, so whatever. Once again, these ghosts bounce off the corners of the screen. And when you know that little detail, it's a little bit easier to dodge them because they're constantly dipping up and down, but they're always going to stay on screen. So you always have to watch them like they're a pawn ball, you know? Like they're like you're a pawn paddle waiting to hit them at the right exact moment. <laughs> That's the best way I could describe it, really. I mean, uh, sometimes these ghosts can be annoying to dodge, but honestly, as, as, when I see them coming and when I know where they're going to be going and uh, where I should be, I actually don't think it's that bad to, uh, of a challenge to deal with. And uh, that one-up I found in the wall, that's like the only one-up I know where to find. If there are any other one-ups in the game, uh, news to me. Anyway, this brings us to the boss. Uh, a ghost couple, a recurring theme throughout the level after all. Very weak, very easy to chop down to, zero health like nothing. But uh, they are a, a really tedious boss if you don't chop them down quickly, because uh, they're constantly reappearing and disappearing off screen constantly trying to dance where you are so they're literally following you and uh, every now and then they'll shoot like arrows which you might miss because sometimes when they're disappeared off screen uh, they'll shoot the arrows which always gets really annoying but uh, again their health is so low and it's so easy to cut them down that uh, it really shouldn't be too much of an issue though it was up for a good read because now we're in the library or La Berry, depending on what kind of the <laughs> what part of the country you're in. Oh, that's another thing I didn't mention yet. Uh, that as soon as you enter Castlevania itself, as soon as you enter stage uh, six, 
uh, all of the enemies that were in the previous levels, like skeletons, bats, that little white ghost stain thing that I just drew, that I just destroyed uh, like five seconds ago. Uh, they all have a little bit more health to their bodies, and you'd probably take at least one more swing to bring them down. Like, skeletons from the first few levels were always just one swing, and they died, and that was that. But uh, now they're like two swings, and this ghost creature that I'm fighting used to be two swings in the old first level, and now he's three swings. A little minor detail, but you know. Oh, and it's also worth mentioning that, uh... I've actually- there's actually a hard mode, sorta, to Super Castlevania 4 after you clear the game. Uh, after you clear the game and it cuts the credits, uh, you can choose to push pause and uh, it'll show you starting from level 1 right over again. Uh, but if you actually got farther in the, in the level, like past the drawbridge, you'll notice that uh, the enemy placement has gotten bigger, so there's more enemies around, and uh, that they retain the Castlevania health. Like, skeletons take two hits to destroy, basically. And I know what you're thinking, why didn't you play that mode, Clement? Well, you know, I actually don't think hard mode is that much harder. I think it's actually just uh, more enemies, but it wasn't really much more of a challenge. I could beat hard mode, no problem. And, uh... Like, well, I'll put it this way. In Mega Man 10, they have a normal mode and a hard mode. Hard mode not only increased uh, the, the defense of the of the enemies you were fighting, it not only increased how many enemies were on screen at the same time, but what it also did was it made them super fast, you know, it made their strategies really uh, inconvenient for the player, and uh, even the bosses were tougher. Super Castlevania 4 does not improve the bosses. The bosses stay the same in hard mode, they don't get harder at all, and uh, honestly, just because there's a lot more enemies, it doesn't make them faster or stronger, it just makes them you know, more enemies. It just felt like there would be more slashing to do, or whipping to do, I should say. But, uh, you know. I just figured I'd play it from the beginning like everyone else does, because that's what uh, you really want to see. If you're going to learn how to play the game, then you got to learn how to play it from my perspective, and that's on the regular setting. If I play it on the hard mode, there's going to be a lot more enemies that uh, most people won't be playing or seeing. And, uh, you know. They might get a little bit confused, or... I don't know. I mean, by all means, if you want me to do hard mode, I'll go by the comments, you know? A lot of people want me to tackle hard mode, then this playthrough will be getting twice as long as we go through the same levels over again, but with a little bit more enemies and no ending payoff, because the ending still doesn't change even when you beat the hard mode difficulty. These paintings like to grab you. <laughs> They're really only an inconvenience when uh, there's a whole bunch of bats around, but that painting wasn't really an uh, inconvenience at all. Obviously, when the rug starts showing a little bump, you want to get down on your knees, because if it's pushing you upwards while you're standing, all the spikes will hit your head, and then that'll be it. You're dead as dinner. Assuming you have dinner that used to be alive. You know, like a turkey or something. Like the turkey that are in the walls. <laughs> or that drumstick I just picked up. <laughs> oh, I love this game. The, the control is really what makes this so fucking special. Anywho, folks, time for the library boss, the big bad knight. He likes to throw his axe, and he likes to slam down into the ground, which creates this fire wave effect. Uh... Keep in mind that, and uh, immediately when he starts swinging, jump because you know he's going to shoot fire along the ground. Once his axe is destroyed, he pulls out the sword, and what I always do is I hang to the right or to the left, and every time he's about to swing, I tend to jump because that way I could dodge the blade attack, and uh, you know. I actually don't think he's too bad to deal with. You can also use your uh, sub-weapons if you want. Again, the Holy Cross really rapes bosses really badly, because it kind of like hits them twice depending on how big their bodies are. So if you, if you have that, it's really much of a cakewalk, and oh my god, why is this collapsing? Castlevania is a creature of chaos. It might just swallow you whole and open up for no fucking reason. But stage 8 is by far one of the hardest levels in the game, not counting the last levels. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> no, but everyone I know who who I've played Super Castlevania 4 with, like since I was a kid, who came over to my house, just like childhood friends, they would get to this level, and that was it. You know, that was the last straw. They might have made it through the library, no problem, but uh, the torture room, the cellar area, this is what got people way too annoyed, and they were like, no, I can't play Super Castlevania 4 anymore, this game's too hard. So, ha! You say it's too easy, but I think it's just the right challenge. It's because there's a lot of spikes in this area. Anything with spikes, that thing I'm on right now, the things I'm going to jump over right now, they all kill you in one hit! You know, you make one raw move and you're fucking dead. Spikes and Simon Belmont just do not mix. What also doesn't help is that there's poison or acid dripping from the ceiling, which you constantly have to look out for. You're constantly dodging the eyeballs, which take two swings to kill now, unlike in level 3, where they were one swing. And, uh, you know, you got bone dragons shooting fireballs, and if you jump into the poison acid thing at the bottom, uh, you actually get damaged a lot. And, you know, you don't, like, die immediately. It's not like you fall. You can actually walk around in that poison. But every time you're in it, Every time your invulnerability goes away, uh, you're taking damage. So, like, you gotta get the fuck out of there. <laughs> and a lot of these, uh, these spike things you actually have to wait and, and watch out for because, like, there might be a, a bunch of spikes lined up in a row and you just, you're just waiting for that right time when to go and when not to go and, you know. It just requires specific movement, you know. I was actually quite pleased with how I did this level uh, for this run. I was expecting to die in this level like my first, be my first death, because uh, I won't lie, sometimes I get stuck on this level too, especially like the last screen of this level. Fucking fireballs. Again, what, you really gotta look out for the acid dropping from the ceiling. Even when you're in midair, if you get hit by that shit, uh, Simon still goes barreling backwards like a pussy. <laughs> I do like the voice they gave Simon, though. Like, he actually has a voice, like when you get hit by enemies. And he always makes this that distinct Dope! sound when he gets hit. Dope! I don't know why. It's just, I like that voice. <laughs> It's a very manly voice for the Super Nintendo, and it's a very clear audio file, you know? Because in the Super Nintendo days, voiceovers weren't a big thing. Like, Star Ocean uh, actually was a very completely voiceover-oriented Super Nintendo game, but the audio files kind of sound scratchy and stuff, because they were trying to compress it and stuff. But Simon Belmont's clear as day. No! 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 no. The stairways with the red, which also have rocks for stairs, I guess. Uh, if you smash those with the whip, they actually explode and the rocks actually damage you. So when you're fighting enemies, trying to swip not where the orange blocks are is always a good idea because it can get you hurt. Just something I figured I should mention. This place is fucked up too. They got all these skeletons that are dancing in the background, like connected to the chains and shit. Really fucked up. Visuals, I must say. Not to mention 10 million coffins and no vampires besides Dracula in this game. I mean, zombies can be in coffins too, but you know. When you think of coffins, you usually think of vampires. You usually think of Dracula or something. You don't think of, oh, some dead zombie who was buried in it. As long as you're crouching in this area, the spikes can't hurt you, but of course holding on to the down button for such a long time might hurt your thumb, and if you ease up, well, you know. Oh, this this part's brutal. You got reappearing, disappearing platforms, and even though it's just one quick line of them, sometimes when you walk across that thing, uh, the platforms you should be jumping for completely disappear on you, and uh, that can screw you up a lot. I've always found that screws me up sometimes. Anyway, folks, it's time for Frankenstein, or Frankenstein's monster, if you want to be spurgy. But uh, he throws lots of potions. You can actually destroy the potions when he throws them. Some explode immediately as soon as he throws them. And uh, I am lucky that this boss was ridiculously easy. I mean, seriously, he's really easy. It's like, 
He has the one potion that explodes into fireballs and hits you right away, and that's always a pain to deal with. But everything else, you, they wait until they hit the ground to do something, whether they create a clone Frankenstein's monster or a fireball, you know, whatever. Uh, you can whip them as he throws them, so it's like, you just keep whipping the monster, he throws potions, you destroy him, rinse and repeat. Anyway, folks, see you for stage nine in part four. Ha, ha, ha.